okay, all of these things are totally antagonistic to normal uterine function. The uterus doesn't know anything about this. All it knows is it is being bombarded every two and a half minutes when the blood goes down there with a whole bunch of chemical toxins that impair and destroy its tissue. Now that, for me, answers the reason as to why uterine fibroids always come back. And that you can take herbs if you like, you can have them cut off, etc. But until you stop the thought processes that create the chemical antagonism, they must come back by law because it is a psychosocial, psychosexual conflict. The same thing with prostate disease. You know, and we have men now that are to the extent that they're letting doctors actually remove their prostate and they don't get the proper information because many doctors know that this renders the man, first of all, impotent because it definitely decreases the sperm count. In doing that kind of procedure, many times it harms the tissue within the penis so that they lose their capacity to become erectile. And now they actually have these clinics where they're putting apparatuses in men for them to have erections. I mean, they just squeeze them up. You know, they have a little bump on them and they squeeze them up to have an erection or they have some type that the man stays semi-erect all of the time. Now, I could imagine that's real uncomfortable, that you are semi-erect all of the time. But these are the things that we are allowing ourselves to be exposed to because we are unwilling to begin to see how we cannot pattern ourselves after anything else other than that that has created us. We cannot reject who we are. We cannot say that we're too black. We cannot say that our hair is too kinky. We cannot say that we have too much buttocks or whatever else, et cetera, unless we know that we've contributed to that. Now, let me just deviate for a minute because I was asked to kind of speak on this about obesity in African women. And this is something that I'm seeing all over the world. The worst cases are here, okay, but even as I travel in other Caribbean areas, et cetera, in Africa, it is the African woman that seems to have much more adipose tissue than necessary. Now, let's look at that because that also is a reflection of a state of consciousness. Now, first of all, let's get clear. The way that the African woman is structured is very interesting because, first of all, Africans have ten times the bone mass and eight times the muscle mass of, a ca ca of Caucasians. So unless we have a tremendous amount of Caucasian background in our bloodline or we have allowed ourselves to become significantly unnurtured, we are not a slender, thin person. Okay, and it's very interesting because I've seen some African women who are very thin but it is not natural because if you listen to the, if you watch them and you listen to their personalities, these are socially deprived women. These are women that basically in childhood were not nurtured. They're what we call a needy woman, okay? And so we've proven that, that in childhood, if a child is not touched, okay, if they're not basically held, et cetera, they really fail to, to, to thrive, the muscles, don't develop, the muscle mass doesn't develop, etc. So many, many very, very small uh, lean people are very much uh, t kinesthetically deprived. They actually need a lot of massage, a lot of holding, in which they didn't get in childhood. But on the average, we are not lean people, okay? Thighs and hips, shoulders always will have more fat and more muscle mass on them. So then how do we wind up with someone who at 18 years old perhaps has uh, hip measurements of 36 and now they're like 90, okay? We know that that is unnatural, okay? There's something wrong there. Now, it's very interesting when we look at the social ramification of what's happened in our subculture here in this Eurocentric value system because at somewhere down the line, and I'm, I'm sure that this is going to be an interesting subject, perhaps in a workshop we can get into an exchange that there was a redefinition of maleness, manhood, for African men, where when it was felt that they no longer could be providers and protectors, et cetera, then they themselves decided that they would actually be studs, and everything went to the first chakra, to a sexual interaction. 
And so, therefore, a, a male proudness, et cetera, was, you know, how many women he had, how many children he had, et cetera. Now, this, this, is, this is very interesting because when you interview and when these women will open up to you, at least in my obesity clinics, over 90% of them have been sexually traumatized, if not verbally, also physically, et cetera, where they have subconsciously begin to insulate, okay, these areas of the body that they felt were under psychic or physical attack for protection. See, and that's very, very interesting. And men, I don't think, are really aware of that. But I know myself, I, you know, I know that I have personally been a victim of that. And I'm sure 90% of us as women can understand is that how many men realize that when they see a woman on the street and they comment about her legs or buttocks, what that does? How many men understand what that does? It is very unnerving. It is definitely not appreciated by most women if they have refrained themselves. It's, a, a, it's actually a, a spiritual attack that most women feel when you do that. And I don't think that most women have ever really told me in that, that it really is a spiritual attack on her body. And so it's interesting when you look at these women, because it's interesting that they always have the, the cute face, et cetera, where they also have the cute body. But because of the uh, constant physical attacks on their body, et cetera, they couldn't take it. Because their mother's telling them, don't bring a baby in here. You're telling them, hey, baby, Look at your legs, I like your hips, wah, wah, wah. So I'm just like, well, what are we going to do? Because my mother told me and my father told me that, you know, if I did X, Y, and Z, this is what's going to happen. And so out of the frustration of trying to eat this energy off, because also, too, she has to deal with her own sexual energies, they use food many times as a sedation and then it gets to a point where just the thought is so heavy of not wanting to look decent. We just want you to shut up and leave us alone. So they emotionally become so heavy with that that they distort their body where they don't even eat anymore any longer. So many women who weigh 350, 400 pounds only eat one meal a day. But they will not shed a pound because now it's actually all a huge emotional body that they have now that's full of all of this fear about the fact that, you know, if I lose all this weight, this is the stuff I'm going to have to contend with. So it's, it's gotten very interesting that with our lack also of being able to sit in groups as we used to and actually talk about these things or even actually sit with each other as women and each other as men, that our bodies are bearing the social stigmas of the pain and the hurt, okay, and the fear that we have allowed ourselves to endure because of the uh, need to try to adapt into a value system that was never ours from the beginning. So, again, just like this gentleman who would feel that, you know, his wife is one thing and a woman that is somewhere else is a different thing and so she could be treated different is part of the problem because too many women have been, as they feel, the other woman that could be treated different. And it's real painful. So I have found that in dealing with women with uterine fibroids, we have entered a domain in the purification process where all of these things have come out the incest. That was a shocker for me. I had no idea that there was as much incest going on in our race family as it is. I had no idea of this and that is still something that we have to educate ourselves about as to why this has occurred. I personally, I feel that a major portion of that kind of behavior is definitely due to eating adulterated food because when you put dead food in your body, adulterated food, it causes the whole vibration of your brain to perceive that some things are okay. When in your right mind, you wouldn't even want to think about that. So I, you know, so I realize that a diet has been another thing and also we have to again understand the influence of the value system that we're going up in. Because now it seems to be okay that men be 
uh, Penthouse and Playboy magazine that's considered acceptable.